All right, everybody, uh, welcome back to another episode of Another Bourbon Show. Uh, tonight, we are going to be drinking uh, a personal favorite of mine. Uh, tonight, we're going to be drinking some Wilderness Trail, specifically their Bottled in Bond. And we talked a little bit about Wilderness Trail last week with, with Peerless. Um, I was corrected just yesterday, by the way. There is a third distillery that does a all sweet mash for their own their own product and that is high west uh our friend of the podcast yeah our friend of the podcast connor uh he's a solid guy he uh he texted me and he commented on youtube to let us know that all of their all of the products that they distill is a sweet mash now they do bring in some sourced products so if you pick up a, a bottle that's got a you know any of that sourced liquor in it it's gonna that's gonna be based on a on a sour mash but yeah high west does a, a sweet mash and i didn't know about it and, and if he does if our small mm-hmm. podcast can have somebody in the audience who's just like oh yeah my distillery does that as well there has to be others we just don't know about too you know yeah. what I, mean? just by yeah, the odds. No, I i agree um but i did ask connor i said hey do you by chance know of any others and he goes no swear to god the only three i know of are peerless Wilderness Trail and uh, High West, but that does not mean that those are the only three. Because yeah. let's be honest here, Connor's pretty dumb too. So, like, <laughs> and the yeah. world is big, and but, the world is big. Yeah, but it's something to be admired either way. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So Wilderness Trail bottled in bond. Obviously, it's a hundred proof. Uh, we talked again. We talked a little bit about the sweet mash, uh, but the mash bill on this is sixty four percent corn, twenty four percent wheat, and twelve uh, percent malted barley. Um, any of the bourbons that Wilderness Trail creates are all a weeded bourbon. Um, they have a rye, which is obviously not a weeded bourbon because that's a rye. Um, but yeah, they are a weeded. Uh, bourbon just like uh, Maker's Mark and the Weller series. So um, you can find this really easily on the Illinois side. I don't know about the Missouri side. I don't know what their distribution is like. It's pretty in, easy. Uh, oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, but why don't we uh, get to the fun stuff? Steven, fuck up the label rating. Uh, no can do, Dan. I'm going to nail this one if you oh, don't okay. mind. No, please do. You know, my first reaction right off the bat is um, that because I live in uh, Missouri and the Southern Illinois area, I'm going to have a natural bias on this label, I think, because living around here, everything kind of looks like this. Like we, like the, the font especially, I just feel like we, it's very Lewis and Clarky. And we just we just love that shit. Can't get enough of it here, or at least our city planners can't, I guess, because every park, every like kind of cutesy neighborhood, it all has this. Like this is just ubiquitous. It's that you know I don't even know what you'd call it, but like the like Declaration of Independence script or something is what I'd call it. <laughs> it is, uh, you know, it, to me it doesn't. It's not a bad label, but there's just a lot going on here that doesn't really necessarily fit. It's kind of like different stuff mashed together. It's almost like you made a collage of middle of America and this was like the output. And then there's the one thing that I think is like sort of a redeeming quality that's kind of unique on it is the logo up top in that top left, but it almost looks like a Wu-Tang symbol as well from a distance. So I, it's just, there's a lot of very- So that gives them bonus things. points, right? That one keep that one does float it a little bit granted. Because look, Wu Tang ain't nothing to fuck with. That's all I'm <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That's what I've heard. So <laughs> but I'm gonna give it a five out of ten. I think it's okay. It's got a lot going on, but it doesn't it still doesn't look bad to me. So I don't want to knock it too much, but I'm okay. gonna give it a straight five out of ten. It's just middle of the road in, in quality to me. I, I think they almost just need to like pick one element of that label and go more all in with it rather than yeah. having su- such a mishmash. It's okay. weird that yellow, like it's like it was taped down over their 
like the where the wilderness trail actually like the beige label just right here yeah 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 it's it's absolutely it's, hand hand added yeah yeah i think that i don't think that looks good I yeah, will I think... say that on the back, it even tells you which bottle of the batch this is. Which is like cool. The, this came out of a 250 bottle batch, and this was bottle 19. It is definitely a functional label. I have knocked some other labels in the past. I give it some more points than, you know, giving it under five because it's a functional label. You can tell right away that this is their bourbon. You can tell a, their products apart very easily. Um, but there's just something about it that just doesn't it's just a sum of a bunch of parts that don't really ever come together for me yeah oh and i should also throw out there that this is also a single barrel so it's a single barrel bottled in bond um yeah so there you go there you have it ryan anything you want to add uh no i mean kind of looks like every other bottle yeah uh, like steven was saying <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. It's just I, I, apparently there's one glass manufacturer has like three different bottle designs. Yeah, and then all the smaller distilleries must just flock to them. Yep. Yep. Fair enough. You know, I, I feel like uh, like if you if you take like that uh, like the bourbon, the yellow tape looking part off of it, looks like a like a Elijah Elijah Craig or like a Larceny type bottle. You know, so at yeah, least that Larceny, yellow sure. piece, yeah kind of distinguishes itself a little differently with the tape i'm just gonna call it tape because that's. i mean the like. bottle is almost identical like um uh, we had something recently that was like exactly like this i guess the woodenville wasn't too woodenville. dissimilar but yeah. it's a little it's a little more curved i think it's got a little more curves to it yeah I don't know yeah i'm sure that, that made everybody very comfortable in the audience watching me go like this <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck oh my god it's like the same the bottle, same right it's yeah. like actually different. the wilderness trail has more curve to it. I thought, well, do it on the sides. Yeah, okay. it's pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, Almost that's... identical. Yeah. <laughs> like same look, I mean, look at the neck. Those are like you know, identical. We, we need to find out who this glass manufacturer is and get him on. <laughs> Just like <laughs> And this one, this one, this one. Like, oh, okay, sweet. I mean, yeah, I'm sure listeners would just <laughs> fucking love to have a glass maker. They'd love to hear us talk about <laughs> glass. What the fuck? <laughs> what about this shitty whiskey? What's the bottle for that one? Oh, it's our generic <laughs> number two bottle. <laughs> we'll workshop now, have, it. There's something. Have, there. have you guys ever drank Wilderness Trail? No. No. Well, fuck it. Let's dive in, because uh, this is a treat. I think. Cheers, guys. Well, Cheers, you guys. Nose is great. Nose is very. Yeah. Sorry, I went straight to drinking. That's right. You've had this one before, anyway. You know what it smells like. And you have a problem. <laughs> this is the first time I've drank anything, any alcohol, since the last time we recorded. Same, actually, I think. Oh, yeah, not 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 the same for me. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> so, what do you think of the nose? You guys talk about that. That's yeah, good. A little appley, cherry. Yeah, I get Sweet. cherry for sure. A lot of cherry. More ethanol than the peerless, which is weird because it's twelve proof or whatever lower. But it but it does have more of a ethanol on the nose, I think. Um, not cherry quite and as vanilla sweet as peerless. Cherry and vanilla are the two prominent things for me, and then some ethanol burn. Cherry vanilla, oh. Dr Pepper. Oh, oh, Just going kidding. deep. <laughs> no, Dr Pepper. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe a little spice, like cherry, like almost. Maybe a little shade of that, actually. Yeah, I can say on the on the palate, I could I could agree with you. There's a little cherry vanilla Dr Pepper to it <laughs> on the very end of it. <laughs> it's interesting. I gotta drink more of it. I, I just had a sip. 
I definitely, I, I've, I feel like I like the nose more than what I just tasted. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but I mean, we have a little while to drink, so. <laughs> Pretty dry. The finish is is nice, not pretty long hug, but it's um, it's not a very like in your face. It doesn't kick you in the face kind of hug. It's just a very pleasant hug that lasts quite of a while, and it's in the back of your throat as opposed to being like a full mouth burn or anything. Yeah, I feel like on the back, it's not. I, I definitely get more of a, a hug than you. I I think Stephen, there's a lot of spice. Same. In the back what end. I was gonna. One of the things that I was going to mention was that um, for me, when I take a sip, um, I get all the the flavors. It, it's not as sweet as I typically expect a weeded bourbon to be, um, which I'm okay with because it's complex. It's got a lot of like really interesting flavors to it. For me, like it finishes and it goes away. But then for me, it like that finish comes back it like fades and then comes back and that's on my tongue as well as the back of my throat and my my chest um yeah almost like like it's like a fucking magic trick or something it disappears and then comes right back for me and i do i don't know if it's like on the nose too a little bubble gum or maybe that like clove now that we keep talking about clove i definitely get that too and when you say yeah. we keep talking about clove you mean you exclusively have ever only talked about clove <laughs> all right all right dude all and right, we've dude. made fun of you, you know, about it that's the best you know, that's the best we can do they're good i mean they, they taste good they smell good and i mean like you, know. you guys know how like we've been talking about how it's like it's not that weird to like guys you know like you prefer <laughs> guys to <laughs> <laughs> no man it's just you man. <laughs> yeah I, I i do get what you're saying dan with like the um the the burn kind of fading and then coming back pretty quick just a moment ago i took like a real quick sip just to have it kind of be gone as fast as possible and then and then now it's come back a little bit after it gets a little air to it mm -hmm. like as i speak or as i take more breaths and whatnot so i think that's what it does i think it's like i think oxygen is de definitely playing a part in this in this whiskey because I feel like the first few times I was taking a sip, I didn't get that at all because I was taking the sip and then not necessarily talking afterwards and whatnot. So I think that's part of it. I think it's pretty interesting. I can't really compare anything else to it. Mm -hmm. So Steven, you said that you, do you have a bottle of this? No. Okay. Um, but you've seen it on the shelf over there. Yeah. What all uh, versions have you seen? You can just say that, label label colors if you want i think i've i've seen i could have seen more than this but i i know that i've seen the bourbon and the rye okay so you've seen the green and the yellow yeah and, and then there's also a black label right and i don't know that i've seen that one. i could have but i just I, if i'm that not intentionally looking for i'm not sure i think if memory serves the black label is the small batch version instead of the single barrel and then there's also a gray label, and that one is much harder to find because that's a six-year bourbon. Uh, there's no age statement on this, um, but we do, we do know that it being bottled in bond, that it's at least four years. Um, but then, yeah, if memory serves, the gray label is minimum of six-year. And then I have a bottle of a store pick from Dean's that is blow your fucking socks off good but i didn't have that until after i had already sent this out to you guys otherwise we'd be we'd be drinking that one but that i'm not kidding you that particular barrel pick might be my bottle of 2021 it is that fucking good did you help pick that one or no i did not i wish i had but i i did not you mentioned before dan that um, other distilleries will actually go to Wilderness Trail to find out what's wrong with their mash. Uh, specifically their yeast. Their yeast, okay. Yeah. Um, they, yeah, so w other distilleries use the guys that are behind Wilderness Trail as consultants to fix their yeast 
um, which of course the yeast has a direct impact on the mash. So in a nutshell, you're right. It's just a little bit more specific than that. Okay. And, and in saying that, you actually answered the question I was going to have, which was what's in it for them to do that. But I guess you're saying it's not the company, it's the individuals and they're hiring them. They're paying them as consultants. Correct. Yeah. The, the money that the money that was used to create Wilderness Trail as a distillery came from the guys who started Wilderness Trail and their knowledge of yeast. They were consultants in the yeast industry and formulating, creating yeast on behalf of other distilleries long before they started Wilderness Trail. And the goal was to use their scientific knowledge of yeast as a source of funds to start their own distillery. And these guys are, if let me get the town right. I do not want to mess this up. Yeah, I was right. They're in Danville, Kentucky. And it is, I've not been, but I've heard that the tour at Wilderness Trail is one of the best tours you can go to, not for the history or the heritage, but the science. Their science room is supposedly just like, holy crap, how good it is. So I don't know, dude. Jerry's still out on science. Yeah, Jerry's still out. <laughs> Are these the guys who messaged you like through TikTok? Did no. They, or, no? Okay. no, I, thought, I no. thought they did. I thought you'd been in touch with someone from there at some point. No. Um, no. So the, the first... The first TikTok video that I ever did that got over a million views was highly focused on Wilderness Trail. It was uh, like none of my TikTok, well, some of my TikToks are, but uh, that video was actually kind of making fun of Weller Special Reserve, um, but mostly about the people who are awe inspired by Special Reserve and like referred to wilderness trail as like bottom shelf and i was like wilderness trail is not bottom shelf like it is it deserves to be on everybody's shelf in my opinion they're just a really smart company yeah i've and never good bourbon. i've never i mean i've never seen them but i'm sure i'm sure i've seen them on the shelf and just didn't you know look at you're, it you're not going to see them at a uh, jewel you're not going to no, see them like at a, a, Kroger. At Benny's, I probably have seen them, and I just walked right by it. At Benny's, you would definitely see them. I can, and I think it's an. I think based on like that's why another one of the reasons why I gave it like a five on the label rating is it's kind of an easy bottle to overlook ultimately because of that bottle shape or whatever it is. It just kind of it has some more muted colors on the label. It it's one of those that Dan, when you're asking me where have I seen it or which ones have I seen, it's tough to immediately recall. It's not that striking to me or that memorable to me. Now that I've had it and we've talked about it, I'll probably note a little more next time I'm out there what it is. But it's definitely one that's just like, oh, yeah, did I see that on the shelf? Was that mm -hmm. the one? It's that kind of bourbon. But that's why hopefully people look up reviews like ours and they're like, oh, I should give it a shot. You know, if you're looking for something new, these are hopefully the reviews you end up, you know, paying attention to and giving it a second thought because I'm enjoying it a lot, too. Listen, yeah, this is, you, this you go is to us for oh, go ahead. you go to us for everything. All right, for reviews, you come to another <laughs> bourbon show. You know, yeah. fuck these, fuck these douchebags on YouTube with the stupid fuck thumbnails. Fred Minnick. He done you know? no shit. Oh, that guy's fine. It's the stupid hipster dudes with long beards who yeah. have the stupid thumbnails. Which we I should mean, do Fred with this Minnick video. does wear. Fred Minnick does wear an ascot. What is an ascot? What is that? Am I just stupid? Yes, but you should look it up. Ascot? A-S-C-O-T. Okay, Ascot. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I didn't want to say, I just wanted your true reaction to it. I thought about doing my own little stupid joke, but I was like, no, your genuine reaction to an Ascot <laughs> is going to be the best. Yes, it will. <laughs> no, but I've never met Fred, uh -huh. but I've heard... A million different people talk about how great of a guy he is and i'm not saying that be, like there's zero chance he's gonna listen to this so like you can tell him i said to go fuck himself i don't give a shit <laughs> but i've heard he's a really great dude 
like no, I've never heard an actual negative word against him as far as a human being goes. Some people don't like his don't agree with his palate. Some people whatever. But as far as like as far as like being a good human being, I've heard he's awesome. Good thing he grew a beard. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you're, you're, you're seeing without a beard? I have. I mean, he was in the military, if memory serves, right? I think he's a veteran. Uh, he's, he looks like Minkus from, if Minkus grew up from Boy Meets World. Well, that's what Minkus? people say about me. So do I look like Fred? No, you, no, you don't look, no, you don't, no, no, dude. Like this, he looks like Minkus grew up and then ate a lot of fast food three meals a day in Great <laughs> Bourbon, you know? Okay, so take that guy in our fantasy football league who said I fucking <laughs> look like Dude, Minkus. Dude, this is crazy. Every picture he's got an ascot on. Yes. Even in his even in his army uniform. No, I'm just he doesn't have one there, but there is a picture. But he is a veteran, right? Yeah, he's a picture in in the US Army Fox News interviewing him. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Um like his awards that he gives out every year are the Ascot Awards. Like it's <laughs> like that's what he named them, the Ascot Awards. So um so he's like proud of his Ascot and I'm okay with that. I don't give a shit one way or another. Jesus. Um, but I, we, but again, I've heard he's a great dude. If we ever get to the point where we can hand out awards, can we please call him the Ass Awards? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Ass Got Awards. I don't know, man. All these, all the, all these people getting married. You know, like you, Stephen. Yeah. I think I think I'm gonna buy a uh, a building with exposed piping and and other shit that's exposed, and then just ho- host host weddings there and make millions. What do you guys think? Good plan. Is that a trend now? Exposed piping is a thing people Dude, all people get married in all these industrial areas now, you know? Like a random warehouse a random warehouse outside of town. I've only seen like barns and stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. I'd have to see pictures. I'll send you a couple, but it's like, man, there's so much because I was thinking about lately, you know, something for my uh wife and mom maybe to collaborate. I'm I'm terrible at you know, building anything or making things look nice. So obviously I wouldn't do that, but having a wedding venue and then just every, everything's outsourced from a catering company. And then you, you just sit there and collect the money. It's brilliant. Yeah, it seems pretty easy until you, you have guys, somebody like falls down <laughs> because you didn't maintain part of the property and like a brick fall, like some of this exposed no, piping no, falls no, down it's, and it's no, it's, it's cast no, it's, iron. <laughs> no, it's 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 made to look exposed, right? I mean, it is. I guess it could just be exposed too. But okay, hold on a second. But hold on, you don't think you you don't think some of these places are specifically making their shit look exposed? Come on. Yeah, but they do that by just leaving it exposed. <laughs> okay. You think well, I'll you, take a, no? It had perfect walls, and then they put up fake pipes. Maybe. Does that make any you know, Does that make any I, fucking sense to you? I I wouldn't put it past a a, a smart entrepreneur. But <laughs> I don't know how that's a smart entrepreneur. Yeah, I don't a know. Smart... Just a, you know, there's a lot of money in weddings, dude. All right? oh, okay. Not sure if you know. Okay. You know, you know, we don't get all give our money to the pair Marquette. I had an it's awesome a, wedding. I liked my wedding. Yeah, it was I cool. loved it too. I loved the pair of Marquette. <laughs> it was but gorgeous. They're cor- but they're p- corporate America, dude. All right, give your money to me. Your wedding. The only thing I I regretted was being in the elevator one stop too late when Bob Seger was in the elevator. You know he was staying. Did I tell you? I've told you that. I'm sure. Yeah, he told he me staying, that. He was staying in the pair of Marquette. He he played like the Civic Center, or whatever the Peoria Arena is. Yeah. Uh, where the Rivermen play and. uh yeah, like a bunch of his like roadies. I mean, they're all like seventy years old because <laughs> Seeger is old now. But they're like, "Oh, you just missed it." Well, Seeger got now, out of the elevator. No, Bob Seeger's still alive. You're thinking of Pete Seeger, the uh, folk lore yeah, hero. Pete Seeger, the dead one. Yeah, I got on. They're like, "Oh, you just got on he, at the wrong." He just got off like two stops ago, like two floors ago. I'm like, Bob Seeger. Like, yeah. I'm like, you know, and he's got that. I mean, no offense, Bob Seeger. He's got that ugly mug. I would have noticed him. Oh yeah. As soon as the door opened. But yeah, he got off hmm. and then retired because that was his last tour. Was it really? I think so. Do you know how how famous you would be if you had murdered him? 
dude, I'm gonna I, say marginally. No, yeah, dude. <laughs> just like people don't realize how many hits Seeger has, and then you oh, like God. see it, and yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like credence where you're like, holy shit, they have that many hits, but nobody talks about them. Yep. Nobody talks about Bob Seeger. I think we can safely say it would have been a better career move for you to murder Bob Seeger than for you to not have, and then made this podcast years later. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Because with good behavior, you could probably be out right about now or like a couple years from now. And like, I feel like there's plenty of your life ahead of you with that notoriety to like spin it into something positive where you could like, yeah. you could maybe have a legit a book. podcast. <laughs> you, could, you could write a book about it. You could be on a, a true crime podcast. Um, we should start one of those. But, I know what mine would be. How, how did Fred Minnick get so fat? I'm sorry, Fred. <laughs> Jesus, dude. <laughs> so you know that um, another friend of the the podcast, Alan Bishop, is actually like close friend. Like he knows Fred really well. Oh, really? And Fred stated that, like, I don't know what it is, but it seems like every time we have any interaction with Alan Bishop, just before he comes on the show, Fred Minnick does something like naming Spirits of French Lick some sort of an award. It's that kind it of synergy that we develop as a podcast. I, with I think distillers. it's us. Yeah. I think it's us for sure. Because all three times Alan has joined us, just before he joined us, something big happened as far as like in the news for the distillery. So we have two entirely different outcomes for like hyping up a guest you either, either yep. die or fred minnick calls you out on his page in a positive way yeah because fred stated that spirits of french lick is his favorite indiana distillery over mgp like that like that's a big goddamn deal so anyway, and you heard it here first, just saying before Fred Minnick had his moment before he got his ass got all <laughs> over the, uh, yeah. the ball all over spirits of French Lake. Yep. <laughs> we were raving about the weeder before it was cool. Now you can't get yes, a bottle. We were. Fred, and that's honestly not truth. We, yeah. we really were. We were raving about the weeder back when it was still called the weeder. That's how long ago we liked it. Yeah, that's a good point. And Fred, I'm sorry I called you fat, but the ascot needs to go. Well, what do you say we go ahead and rate some? Uh, we've gotten way that's, off track. That's, Normally, we, that's good, we that's always good call because I have to go buy mouse traps before stores close at ten. Oh, okay. Okay. We've got we, we've wandered off the wilderness trail. I would we, say that's either. exactly what we did. We yeah. got lost in the uh, continental divide. We, we, we were ag we were against the wind, if you will. We were, oh, pulling in Bob Seeger. We were go. half in the ascot, if you will. We were rambling and gambling men. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and stop <laughs> the puns. We were dead in an elevator. God, this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the last one. I did another bourbon show. Crime podcast, Bob Seeger. <laughs> True crimes we should have committed. <laughs> God, this is going to be a seven-minute episode by the time you're done editing. I feel like we're on. I feel like we're on tonight, man. Yeah, I'm leaving in the bits where we talked about killing Bob Seeger. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> You would not you would not smell a difference. I promise you that. <laughs> All right, guys, let's rate Wilderness Trail single barrel bottled in let's, bond. Let's turn the page. Let's I'll stop. Let's, I'll let's stop. Do it. Oh, that's a Bob Seger song. I'll stop. Yeah, we, we we're aware. <laughs> yes. yes. Who wants to go first? I'll go. I'll go seven point nine for you oh okay yeah i think this one is a pretty high one for me but um like i said i think that the overall like all the flavors are cool but they're gone real quick for me um 
but I think it's super pleasant on the nose, on the palate, and so it it should reflect that, and it should be, I think a real, I think some point has a real good score, and uh, but for me, it just doesn't quite pop into the eights. Um, I would love, I like it well enough to have it on my shelf for sure. I agree with you, Dan. It deserves a spot on people's shelves, and I would love to try more of their offerings. Um, and I'm certain if I saw a barrel pick of it, I would pick it up. And uh, I have no doubt that the one you got, uh, especially from Dean's, is fantastic. So, yeah, 7.9. And uh, and this is just their standard bourbon. So, great stuff. Cool. Ryan, you want to go or you want me to? Yeah, I'll go. Uh, I really like the nose, the apple the cherry, and everything like that. I kind of wish the nose translated to the actual palate because uh, I got – it was a lot of spice. I feel it was very – the palate kind of, the spice kind of overtook any, any sort of flavor. Um, I mean, not every flavor, but for my palate, it was a little too spicy, but it was still really good. I would love to try their other offerings. Maybe that bottle that you have, I'm going to go seven and a half, 7.5. It was good. Um, you know, I'm glad they're scientists with yeast, but they're not scientists with bottle design. So maybe they can work that out. Uh, but, uh, Overall, I liked it. I'm, you know, I think I feel like I I could be in that same boat as like Steven with Smoke Wagon, where at first he was like, "Eh, it's pretty good. It's all right. You know, I still like it a lot. But if I have it again, two months later, I might be totally wowed by it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is definitely one where it'll fall under that category at some point. But yeah, I'm gonna go 7.5. I still really liked it. I mean, a 7.5 on our scale is, is a really good score. Like, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. 7.5 is a really good score. Um, and I'm going to go with an 8.0, just a flat 8.0. Um, for most of the same reasons as Steven, but I do put it into that 8.0 care, uh, 8.0 level. Um, I, I think that it's phenomenal bourbon. I think it's like when I, like that TikTok that I did was honest to God that I don't know why people rave about Weller Special Reserve. Weller Special Reserve is a good $25 bottle. Other than that, it's not worth a shit. I don't put this on the same level as Weller 107. Not even close. Well, kind of close. Um, and it doesn't have the same flavor characteristics as a Weller 107. It doesn't have the same flavor characteristics as, as a Maker's or a Maker's 46, even though they're both weeded bourbons. But I th- I think that this deserves the hype that anything with the name Weller on it gets. This is worth every penny of $50. So if you see it, grab it. You will love the, the whiskey, you'll love the bourbon, you'll love the pour, and you'll love how easy it is to find on the shelf. And all together, everything, the flavor, the ease of finding, the price, 8.0 for me. You know, one one kind of pattern I'm noticing in our reviews is we always say like a 5.0 is Jim Beam White Label. But I think we can also kind of unofficially say that everything, usually between our 7.5 and like maybe 8.5 or so range, would beat a lot of the most popular stuff in a blind oh, for tasting sure. for sure like it, it anything you pick in that range that we give that kind of score that those things really stack up i would say against whatever your weller is or your blanton's most blanton's picks things like that so Another